So there it is. That is our new uh, coolant temperature sensor. And it's not the one for the gauge, it's the one to tell the computer what's going on. And there's a real good chance that this is the thing that's contributing to my recent issues with warm and cold starts, mostly because I don't think the computer is getting a proper signal from this, so it doesn't know if the, if the car is hot or cold, so it just kind of fights till it finds it. You can see this is the AC Delco part. This isn't uh, AutoZone or O'Reilly or anything. And uh, let me get it right here. Here are the part numbers. You can see those. The light's very bright, I know. There you go. 213-4396 is the replacement part number. The original number was 19, looks like 1918-7367. So this is supposed to be the part that actually sends a signal back to the PCM, not the gauge, because there's actually two of these on an LT1. So let's go over to the car and get ready to start... Uh, getting this thing installed. All right. The first thing we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to get this elbow off to make some room here. And yes, I've got the aluminum elbow, not because I think it makes the car faster, but because my old one was crumbling to pieces and it was plastic. And I got the crinkle finish because I don't wanna raise any eyebrows when this thing goes through emissions. Anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to take off this vent line. It comes up from the distributor here. And we're going to take this sensor wire off right here. So, uh, that, if I'm right, I think that's actually the, the IAT. Anyway, we're going to take that off so we can get access to, which you cannot see. But underneath, hiding under there, is the sensor. And now you can't see it, but it's right it's, it's right in the front of the water pump. And yeah, we are going to lose some coolant. I'm doing this from the top instead of the bottom, mostly because I don't want coolant in my face. And this car is not fun to get up in the air. And it looks like the axis is just as pain in the ass from the top as it is from the bottom. And I, like I said, I'd rather not have the car up in the air. So let's get going. All right, first thing we're going to do is we're going to get this elbow off. Loosen these here. And these down here. Now, if you've got the factory set up, you've got clamps similar, but not the same. But you know how to get the elbow off. Chances are you've already done it by now. Let's take out the breather port and pop off the sensor wire try not to lose that I don't like messing with this harness too much because after over 20 years these wires get a little crispy and let's see if we can get this thing loose without tearing it apart too much more Committed now. All right, that's that. Let's see if we can get this off. There we go. Right off the math. Not too bad. Probably not a bad uh, time to uh, look at putting a little throttle body cleaner in there. All right, now we can see right down in there, and there it is. Right there. That's what we're going to be pulling off. Let's get to it. Okay, what's really handy is that I happen to have a 7 8 ratchet angle box end wrench. And that's going to let me get 
the sensor off a lot easier. Now, two things I'm going to do before I even touch this thing is one, disconnect the sensor, and you see I have the wire loose here. You can see that. I was careful to do that. And then I'm going to put a catch bucket because I know I'm going to lose some coolant. And probably a rag just in case, so we don't want any to get over on the uh, distributor. You know, Opti Sparks and water. Now, I'm not going to show you the whole thing, me taking it off. You'd lefty loosey righty tighty. You know how to get a sensor out. No magic here. But let's do it. All right. You can see we're getting it loose. So that's a good thing. Okay. Let's see here. There it is. Got it all buttoned up and back in. Just tight enough. You can pretty much go by what you by the what it took to get the old one out. And speaking of the old one, here we go. This is the old sensor. You saw how shiny and bright the, the new one was. See, this is kind of dull and discolored. And it has Teflon tape on it, which it really shouldn't need. But also, here's a good note, two-wire sensor, not the three-one, not the three-wire or the one-wire. Um, and again, no sealant because it comes with sealant pre-applied. In fact, this, the, this can sometimes, this... Uh, Thread tape can actually interfere with the signal, so it kind of acts the body of this kind of acts like a ground. Anyway, let's put it back together and see if uh, we've fixed a problem. All right, let's see if uh, we've helped our situation at all here. Of course, it would help if I had the right keys. This again, now that I have the right key, let's see. Let it prime now. It's been having some trouble doing cold starts. Let's see if it does now. Apparently not. Good. Got nothing on the dash. Now, let's check for leaks. For what we can see, we don't want any leaks. Nope, no water. So it looks like we did it. And by the way, it's sticking the coolant. This is how much we lost. So not too bad. And I shouldn't have to bleed the system either. But I'll watch it for the next few days. Anyway, guys. That's it. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Bye.